Hey everybody, I hope you all are doing well and welcome back. And today I am super excited to do a full review on this Lagavulin Distillers Edition. Now, if you saw our Whiskey Wander Queens Creek Costco grand opening, you have seen that uh, they had these on sale and mass. So we picked one up there, um, but it did definitely get a bit overshadowed by some of the heavy hitting whiskeys and bourbons that we got in our part one. And it's gonna be way overshadowed <laughs> by the heavy hitting whiskeys and bourbons that we got in Queens Creek Costco grand opening part two, uh, soon to be out. But today we're gonna have a bit of a one-on-one -on -one time with another member of this Lagavulin line. And as a member of the peat mod, those of us who love <laughs> peaty whiskeys, I am literally just tickled pink uh, to get a chance to try it and to add it to the collection. So we're gonna be trying out this uh, Lagavulin Distillers Edition. We're gonna give it a score based on the nose, on the palate, and on the finish. And then we're gonna talk about if this newest addition to Lagavulin is a home run or a foul ball. And again, that's baseball talk for those of you out there in Britannia. Now, before we get to it, if you like these reviews, if you like the wanders, if you like the hauls, the unbottlings, the unboxings, the tastings, and really <laughs> all the amazing stuff we got cooking up for you, and we have tons of amazing stuff cooking up for you, don't forget to like and subscribe because it does really help the channel to grow. Again, super thankful for that. But also you get updates when our newest videos come out on Sundays and sometimes when they come out in between. All right, now let's get down to the video. Okay, so first things first, let's get a glass here and let's get this bad boy open. All right, so let's see if we can uh, turn it over, get it situated on both sides to make sure we get it well moved around. Let's see if we can get a pop. Hey, that's pretty good. Let's see if we can get a little bit of, oh, let's see if we can get a little bit of juice there. Ooh, wow, <laughs> oh, wow. So first things first, it's gotta be said that the color on this is just spectacular. I mean, it just looks really amazing, especially in comparison uh, to some of the other Lagavulins, which are not as deep and rich as this. Uh, this one definitely seems a lot more kind of mahogany than it does uh, on the standard Lagavulin. But I mean, Lagavulin, of course, is beautiful on its own. But this one, really, really spectacular. And the nose on it initially, ooh, that is iconic Lagavulin, uh, but a little bit more so. Hmm, you get kind of like a maxed out peatiness, medicinalness. Smells like you're in a hospital on a beach, maybe drinking whiskey. <laughs> yeah. All right, so while I'm getting some more nose on this, let's talk about uh, more of the bottle facts on the Lagavulin uh, 2022, the Distillers Edition. Um, there are a couple things that have changed uh, on this year from previous years that could sort of be seen as distressing. Of course, what it ultimately always comes down to is taste, but if you're a collector, that's not always the thing that's most important. At an initial glance, uh, a couple things are missing from the bottle. Uh, first is that there is not a batch number on it, so it's a little bit more generic. Second, uh, and number two, is that there is not a year on it, so I don't see anywhere on here where it says which year this is from, which can get complicated later on. And third, and really the most distressing aspect about what is missing from this bottle is the fact that there is not a age statement on it. So is it 16 years old, like the beloved standard line? Well, we don't know. And I think really the only way we're gonna find out is gonna be by taste. But the good side is that it is supposed to be uh, more of the laggable in this <laughs> that you love than just the standard 16, so we're gonna have to see. For example, the whiskey is aged in recharred American oak barrels to the point where they start to like peel up and have like the tops of them uh, <laughs> get blackened. Um, and then it is also finished in Pedro Jimenez seasoned sherry cast. In fact, on the bottle here, it says that it is uh, double matured in Pedro Jimenez. Now, <laughs> what exactly does double matured in Pedro Jimenez mean? I don't know. Does it mean it's matured twice as long? Uh, is it matured twice as much? Uh, maybe, perhaps, it is uh, stored inside of PX barrels that are also inside of PX barrels. Double matured. <laughs> so whatever it is oh, that they're doing on it, it makes it for a pretty good nose. It is quite good, in fact. Um, it has all that familiarity that you would expect and you would know it's a lack of loan right off the bat. But it's a bit sweeter, it's a bit darker, and it's a bit more kind of like mellowed out, almost like a <laughs> low-tea version of Lagavulin 16. 
Initial impressions on it is it smells like campfire roasted sweet potatoes. Oh, you know what? There is a restaurant in London who makes campfire roasted sweet potatoes that smells exactly like this and they are crazy good. I'll put, I'll put a video down there. There's a salty sea and like whiskey combination in there, which is what you would expect from Lagavulin. There is campfire, but there's also a much, much more noticeable, like a, a sweet metallic, maybe even like a, <laughs> like a lead flavor. Uh, not a lot, but just enough uh, to give it a metallic sweetness. Like, you know, what you get with Mexican candy. By the way, <laughs> don't eat Mexican candy. It's got lead in it, but it's delicious. Uh, the char on it is very present and like fully engulfing in your senses. And that kind of sherry that they've thrown in there really does start rounding out the edges and keeping that smoky charness that could run wild really keeps it in check. This is exactly the kind of whiskey that I would love to just kind of sit around and smell all day. <laughs> all right, so let's give it a score. And I know that the expectations are gonna be set high for this Lagavulin uh, Distillers Edition. Um, so it'd be easy to say that it falls short, but so far on the nose, it's really just kind of like knocking it out of the park. This is triggering all the things in my nose to say, hey, this is good, and this is what I should be drinking right now. So for the nose score, I'm gonna give it a five out of six, which is pretty close to perfect. Now, there's nothing in particular holding it back from perfection, but it just, just doesn't take it to that next level to get there. It would really have to be impressive to get to that level. But uh, still, it's got me pretty riled up <laughs> to move on to the palate. All right, so let's uh, get an initial impression on the palate here. Ooh, that's interesting. You know what, right up front, just front and center you get burnt green chili pepper skins man <laughs> this would be great with street tacos uh which i guess this kind of connection i never even thought about street tacos vagabond Ooh. the abv on it is uh is very pleasant and a, a bit light touch though which is again what you'd expect at 43 percent mm. there's a lot more like vegetal to it uh on the baseline than on the normal 16. Hmm. that's very interesting all right, so while I'm tasting this, let's talk a little bit about the cost on the bottle. So as I said before, uh, we picked this one up at Costco in Queens Creek. Um, and I have seen it in California as well. So it didn't, it was only something that you can get in Arizona. You can also get it in California. Um, but it, it does seem to be out and about and available. So it's not, you know, allocated. It's not limited, really. Um, they made a decent amount of it, I would guess. And we got this one for $99.99. So you could actually pick it up right now today at Total Wine for $139.99. Or even at BevMo, who has it at $146.99. But still, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, BevMo's always going to be a little bit more expensive. But, you know, I'm at least a little bit proud that BevMo actually has something that's relatively unique. And they have it in stock. So good for you, BevMo. Good job. <laughs> But at those price picking it up at Costco, uh, it does mean that we ended up saving about $40 off the next lowest price, the total wine price, or 40%, which let's face it, at 40% is still getting pretty close to usury levels of pricing. Come on, total wine. I expect that out of BevMo. The ABV on is at 43%, which is about standard for Lagavulin, and you can see that uh, right there. But as I tend to say, it is a bit low for the modern palette. And there's also, uh, the other thing is there's not an age statement. I know I've said it once, <laughs> I'll probably say it again, uh, but I think not having an age statement on it really hurts the line with the collectors, even if it does allow Lagavulin to be a lot more creative with like their blending to get kind of a flavor palette that they're looking for. So the tasting notes that I have on here, after a bit more depth, first there is that classic Lagavulin staple flavor, briny ocean spray, medical goodness uh, with peat and a strong graininess. That's all good and well. But the thing that is different here on the DE is that it feels feels a little more elegant. Like you should be drinking it with your pinky up. <laughs> you know, it feels a little more elegant in the mouth. It's silkier. It's less raucous in the sense that it is well-balanced and polished and sweeter. Uh, perhaps more of those brutish flavors that, again, a lot of people really like, including myself, have been toned down. Uh, to be able to see through to some of those more nuanced sherry flavors and fruitiness that actually do end up coming out on the palate here. The finish is lengthy, longer than I thought it would be, uh, but it returns back to those traditional Lagavulin tracks at the very end. The peat and medicinalness come back out to carry it all the way through to the very finish. And yeah, there are flashes of things like corn chips and <laughs> I guess maybe like Fritos, you say Fritos. Um, and uh, at the moment of subdued sweetness and fruitness and all that sherryness, well, those are in there, 
but they're just kind of way stops on the journey. They don't run all the way through. They kind of show up and then you get right back on the same road on the way out. Sort of like a good jazz song where the ending comes back to that original beat so you don't forget what song you're playing. Think Miles Davis covering 80s hit time after time. <laughs> one of my favorites. So on the palette, I really like this one. Uh, I like the more equalized flavors. Uh, I like the fact that it gives the lighter flavors a fighting chance to actually let themselves to be heard uh, under some of those more heavier, more robust flavors. Um, and I think this is something that would be really good to drink on a back porch, maybe in the summertime or like a camping trip where you don't have to wear a coat. Um, it's really like a summarized version of the Lagavulin 16. So it doesn't feel so wintry. On the palate, I will give it a 11 out of 15 because for me personally, it's a little bit too soft-spoken. And I can see why people would like that, but for me, it's a little too soft-spoken. So it turns out that when I think about what I want to add to a Lagavulin to make it a, a more preferred for myself. What we end up with is just the Lagavulin 11, the Offerman edition, which is super duper charred. In fact, you know what? Let's try a little bit of that. Let's do a comparison. This, get a pop. See if we can get a pop. Ah, ah. Just a little bit. Just a little bit for myself here. Cheers. Hmm. Wow, that's nice. That is Oh, so charred. So charred. <laughs> wow. The finish score on this one, it's going to be decent, right? It, it, uh, the thing is that it's not blazing any new trails or reinventing uh, the doorknob, uh, but it does kind of have a good representation of that Lagavulin family palette. So I really do like it, but again, it's just not, you know, outstanding. It's not, uh, <laughs> it's not blazing any new paths. It's not being real creative. It kind of just sticks to the family line. So uh, it is good. I'll give it a eight out of nine on the finish. So those are my scores and that is all well and good. But really, let's get an opinion from somebody who has a nose like a thousand pound black bear <laughs> who can smell trash from a hundred miles away. How do you think she found me? Let's get a score from the wife score. Wife score. All right, we're gonna try some of the baby lion against it. Point five. These do? Yeah. <laughs> Let me check. It's supposed to be the best version of a Lagavulin 16, basically. All right, so there you have it, folks. Uh, the wife takes off one point for the nose and one point for the finish, uh, which ends up putting us uh, at a grand total of, uh, what was that? Five out of six on the nose, 11 out of 15 <laughs> on, on the palate. And then uh, we have uh, eight out of nine on the finish. And then we take off two points, one for the nose and one for the finish. The wife, which was at a grand total of 22 points. So overall, I think this Lagavulin or Distillers Edition, well, I have mixed feelings about it. Uh, as a whiskey collector, uh, the whiskey collector in me wants to have those kind of like badges that are associated with quality and, and hold their value and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so things like an age statement or like a bottle number or a dump date or the name of the guy who poured this into the bottles. You know, I want to know all those things. But the whiskey drinker in me says, who cares? As long as it tastes good, it is a nuanced take on what Lagavulin could be. And as a diversion from the standard Lagavulin line, also allows us to better understand just exactly how good the 16 really is. It'll never take the 16's place for sure, but it's it'll add to the 16's legacy. So overall, I think I like this because it's, you know, it's meant to be part of a collection for someone who loves Lagavulin, for someone who has gone through all the different Lagavulin lines and phases and tried all the different things, it is this one that will help you better understand the body of Lagavulin as a whole, um, but it would not be for somebody who is <laughs> running through Costco grand openings, supermarket sweeps, trying to grab everything up as quickly as possible just because it's hyped and also overvalued. So I'm glad to have it. I don't foresee picking up another one from this year, but if we get an age statement back maybe next year, that'd be hard to resist. All right, so that's it for our review of the Lagavulin Distillers Edition 2022. And I hope that you really enjoyed it. And if you did, if you uh, like these videos, if you like the wanders, if you like the hauls, if you like the reviews, if you like the unbottlings, the unboxings, and really all the amazing stuff we got cooking up for you, we have tons of great stuff cooking up for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, that way, uh, one, it does help our channel out, and we're super thankful for that. Two, it is really good for your whiskey mojo. It pleases the whiskey gods. And... You get notifications when our newest videos come out on Sundays and, you know, 
whatever in between. All right, everybody. Uh, that's it for me today. And just remember, before I go, if you do find a whiskey that you love, just buy it. Because, honestly, if you don't, somebody else surely will. In this case, <laughs> it might even be me. All right, everybody. I'm out for the rest of the day. I hope you all have a great rest of your week. And adios.